Hello and welcome to Cross Life with your host, Pastor Bob Cornell. And Sharon Cornell. And we are so glad that you're watching today. We are the pastors of Covenant Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And we would love for you to check us out. The best way to do it, you can check us out on our Cornell Ministries YouTube channel, on Facebook, and our website, cornellministries.com. And uh, again, we have an exciting program today. We're going to be talking about something that is so important for the child of God, and that is the subject of prayer. And we as children of God, and I pray that you are today, if you aren't, today can be the day that you accept Jesus into your heart to be your Savior and Lord. But again, we're going to talk about the subject of prayer, and so often the subject of prayer uh, becomes a subject that, that becomes overly uh, uh, religious. Uh, um, it becomes Com just a subject of, we think of it's just a religious duty. Right. Uh, but it's not at all. Actually, prayer is something that is so wonderful, yes. so incredible for the child of God. It's a privilege that you and I have yeah. to be able to talk to our Heavenly Father. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that subject today. But before we do, let's just have a word of prayer yes, and ask yeah. for the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank Father, you, we just come before you today in the name of Jesus. Thank We're you, so thankful that, Lord, we Thank have you, this Lord. great privilege yes, of, Lord, coming before you in prayer. And we ask you, Lord, for right Thank now, you, for your help, for your guidance, you, Lord, Lord, and that you would just touch those who are watching today and help them, Lord. Give, give Thank Lord, you. give them the help yes, of your spirit yes. in this great subject of prayer. And we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. amen. You know, we're, today we're going to be coming from uh, the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, where Jesus gave what is commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. So I'm going to read it, and, and honey, you, you, you jump in here. Okay. And uh, we're, we're talking about this great subject. So Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. He said, In this manner, Therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, or holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts or sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. First of all, I want to we'll make a few statements about prayer because Jesus said in, in, this, in these verses, in this manner, therefore, pray. What is prayer? Prayer is just simply talking with God. Yes. It's not just, right. it's not some religious duty. It's not some religious ritual that we go through as a, as a child of God, not at all. Right. Prayer is simply, again, talking with God. And, and not only talking with God, but it's talking to God as our Father. Yeah. As Jesus would open up this Lord's Prayer, he would, we'll get into it more, and I'm getting ahead of myself somewhat, but he would say, when you pray, say, our Father who is in heaven. You see, prayer, again, is that it, it's, it's not complicated. Right. It's simple. It's simply talking with God through Jesus and right. what Jesus has accomplished for us, for us at the cross right. and his resurrection. And through faith in what Jesus has done for us, uh, God is our Father now. And what a, what a tremendous privilege, you know, right. that is. Right. It's indicative here, uh, as we're going to get into in just a moment, but it's indicative of relationship. Yes. Our Father, we have relationship with Him. He has Amen. relationship with us. That is the, the beauty. And Jesus here giving us this model uh, to, to, um, to talk to the Lord about. He, in the previous verses, He said, you know, when you, when you go to pray, don't use vain repetition uh, don't just come in and say the same thing over and over and over again. You have a real living relationship with our Heavenly Father that we get to talk to Him about everything that concerns us, anything that concerns us. What a great privilege, again, that we can come, uh, and I'm, I'm sidetracking just a little bit, but we can make all our requests known to Him. We can make everything uh, that's in our heart 
heart, <clears throat> excuse me, every concern, every part of us, he knows and he wants us and delights in seeing us come mm -hmm. and talk with him. It's Amen. beautiful, the relationship that we have with him. And just at the very beginning, as Jesus is telling us, uh, giving the example to on, on how to pray, uh, is, is simply come to the Father. Just come to the yes. Father, the Amen. one who loves you with an everlasting love. You don't have to come in some stiff, formal way. He just wants you to come Amen. and talk with him and, and love to be with him as he loves to be with you. Amen. You know, prayer is an expression of our faith and our love for God and really his love for us. Right. Again, it's an expression of our faith, our trust in God and our love for him and his love for us. That's yeah. really what, uh, what prayer is all about. And you mentioned, honey, that Jesus in, earlier in this passage, he, he had made that statement, don't be like the hypocrites, mm -hmm. and which, the, which were the religious people. Don't right. be like them, for they love to pray, you know, standing on the street corners that their prayers may be seen by men. Yeah. So, we're not, there are certain ways in which we don't pray. We don't pray with a selfish motive to be seen by other people. That doesn't mean that we don't pray in public, not at all. Yeah. We actually just prayed over television, all right? So it doesn't mean that we don't pray in public, but it means that we're, our motivation is we're not praying to be seen or heard by other people, right. but our motivation is that of faith and love for God. And Jesus would also say this about prayer. He would say, pray to your father who is in secret, in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Yes. Wow, what a promise yes. of God. God. What a great heavenly right. father we right. have. That he says to us, go in that, that secret place. Yeah. In that secret place, uh, some translations say uh, a closet. It doesn't have to be a closet. No. Right. That secret place can be your vehicle. Yes. That's, that's your, I love. <laughs> her car is like yes. her secret place. It's my sanctuary. Uh, right. Yes, indeed. Uh, but a secret place can be your bedroom. It can be just somewhere where you're alone with God. Yeah. And, and we need to have a regular practice of it. But even, get this, prayer is such a, one, a powerful thing that you can be in a crowd of people yeah. and be talking to your heavenly father. Yes. And it doesn't have to be out loud. It's just in your own spirit. You're talking with God. I want right. to say that again. You can be at work. And, and again, we do need, uh, I, I believe very strongly, according to scripture, that we do need to have a time of the day. And it can be in the morning. It could be in the evening or in the afternoon. That's between you and God, that we do have a time that we are alone and we're talking with God and he's talking to us. But I want to encourage you that beside that, you can talk to God at any hour of the day. Yes. You can be in a crowd of people. You can be at work and talking with he your heavenly father. Right. And a wonderful thing about prayer is that prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. Yes. In, other, in other words, we talk to God and he will talk to us. Yes. What a wonderful thing. Yeah. You know, Jesus said this about God. He's not the God of the dead, but he's the God of the living. And he's a living God. You're a, he's a living heavenly father. Jesus is a living savior. He's alive. We just, you know, celebrated Easter just prior to this taping and celebrating the Lord, you know, how the, the tomb is empty. Yes. Jesus is alive. Praise God. And our heavenly father is alive. Yeah. Now, going into prayer some more, there you know, when Jesus gave the Lord, what is referred to as the Lord's Prayer, he gave us a model for prayer. And I want to emphasize that just for a few minutes. He gave us a model to use really on a consistent basis in our prayer life. Again, a model or an example to follow on a consistent basis in our prayer life. Now, a model, that does not mean a ritual. It does not mean that we have to say these exact words every right. time, even though there's nothing wrong with that. I know in my own prayer life, it, it's not on an every day, but I, on a consistent basis, I will speak the Lord's Prayer. Or in my own time with God, I will speak uh, portions of the Lord's Prayer. He gave us a model to use 
and again, on a consistent basis in our prayer life. Now, why would, why would Jesus uh, give us a model or an example to follow? Again, not a ritual, but an example. I believe the reason why is because in our prayer life, so often, we can, we can become scattered in our thoughts. In other words, we don't know what to pray. You know, in, in Luke chapter 18, I believe it is, Jesus, uh, or the disciples, I'm sorry, came to Jesus, and they said, Lord, would you teach us to pray? Yeah. They said those words, Lord, would you teach us to pray? And in Luke chapter 18, that's where in Luke, Jesus gave the Lord's prayer in Luke's gospel in Luke chapter 18. But, it, but, but their, their thinking was, we don't know how to pray, especially like you do. They were observing the prayer life of Jesus and their heart was, Lord, we want to pray to the Father like you. Yes. And so, Lord, Lord, would you teach us to pray? And then Jesus gave this model, this example. And I believe the reason why is so often is because I know, I know I'm this way. We can become scattered in our thoughts. Sure. Yeah. And uh, over the years, I've had so many people. I've, I've dealt with this myself personally. And as a pastor, dealing with it with other people, They've come to me and they, they've come to you and they, they've said, I, you know what, I, I just don't know what to say. Yeah. Or I, what, do I, what do I do? You know, yeah. Lord, I thank you. And is that it? Right. You know, and, and, and what do I, and so my point is this, Jesus gave the Lord's prayer because so often our, scots, our thoughts are scattered and we don't know really what, to, we don't know what to pray. But in this Lord's Prayer, again, Jesus gave us a model, an example that we can follow, some structure, you can say, to our prayer life right. on a consistent basis. Right. You know, as we were talking about this and, and relationship with our, with our Heavenly Father, He's also our friend. Yes. And we can speak to Him and talk with Him. Uh, and again, not, as my husband mentioned, it's not just a monologue, a one-way conversation, but it's a two-way conversation, as you would with a friend. Uh, there's nothing like being <clears throat> with your best friend. Nothing like being with your best friend. Even if there are no words, just mm. being in the presence of a friend, being in the presence of your best friend, there's something just precious about that time and something just so beautiful about that time. And uh, as we know, you know, though other people may not be able to read our mind and read our hearts, uh, read our thoughts, our God knows our thoughts before Amen. we ever think them. Amen. And as we're talking about having scattered thoughts and man, we live in 2022, the age of iPad and iPhone and I, 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 where we're, we're consistently bombarded with information and that's why it's so important to just come away yes. come away for a time and just be with your beloved come away and uh, spend some time with him not out of duty or, or religious uh, ritual but out of pure delight of being in relationship with someone who loves me. Amen. You know, uh, Bob and I have been married for, for 23 years and on June 27th, we'll celebrate 24, woohoo. Uh, and thank the Lord, we um, 20, almost 24 years ago, we were married in, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We had a, a beautiful church uh, ceremony. We had a, a pastor uh, marry us, and uh, so we're legal. And uh, we have a beautiful plaque at home, a beautiful piece of paper that says that we are married, that we're in covenant relationship. But, you know, we can have all of that. But if I don't talk with him, uh, and he doesn't talk with me at least every once in a while, uh, and all we're right. texting all day long if we're not beside each other, but uh, and that's a good sign. But if we didn't speak with one another, if we didn't talk with one another, even though we are in covenant relationship, we wouldn't have much of a relationship. Right. Yeah. And that is exactly the same as it is with our Heavenly Father. We are in covenant relationship. If we believe in Jesus Christ, that He died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day, is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. If we believe by faith that He did that, that He did that for us, 
that great love that he showed us at Calvary, that he did that for us. Yeah. Man, there's, we want to come yeah. and talk with him. We want to, we get Amen. to come. What a privilege we have to get to come and make all our petitions known. And just right. simply, if we don't have the words, just simply be with him, knowing that he understands our heart and he understands our mind, even when we're scattered. Amen. You know, and God will use that time of prayer to pour into you yeah. and to pour in his strength and to pour in his help. And that really, it's that place of prayer that primarily that God will use it to pour in again, his strength, his help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and it's so, so important. So we're going to go through each one uh, uh, or each uh, line, you could say, of the Lord's Prayer. But I want to emphasize this as we begin. The, the Lord's Prayer could be broken down into three different things that, that is emphasized in prayer. Number one is relationship that you just emphasized, honey. Yeah. First of all, relationship. We're going we're to deal with that more in just a moment. But number one, again, is relationship. And that's so important to understand as it concerns talking with God. You are in relationship, yes. a living relationship yes. with your God. heavenly Father. Yes. You're in relationship with Jesus. Right. You're in relationship with the Holy Spirit who lives yes. on the inside of you. You're in relationship. So it's Thank not you, some dead, dry, formal, you know, just simply talking and that's it. Right. No, it is a, a living yes. conversation. Thank you, Lord. Right. And so relationship. Number two is praise and worship. Mm -hmm. And th it, so many different words that could be used here, but thanksgiving and uh, uh, again, honoring, but praise and worship. That's a major part of our, of our coming to God in prayer, just thanking Him. You know, and you'd mentioned earlier, Jesus said uh, earlier before the Lord's Prayer, He said, don't be like the Gentiles that use vain repetition. And the, you know, what Jesus was coming against there was just vain repetition right. or repetition uh, that was that was viewed as you know if I say it over and over again that means God God hears me. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is is this: Jesus wasn't against he wasn't coming against using repetition in prayer. He was coming against using repetition just to be heard, as if God needs a thousand thank you gods in order to be heard, and then he'll be heard finally on the thousand, you know, the 1,000 or the 100, thank you, God. Right. And that's what Jesus was coming against. Don't think of it that way as if God's up in heaven and he's waiting for you to say, you know, say the right word, and then, boom, you know, the, the, the easy button will be pressed, and, you know, <laughs> finally you have access to God. Yeah. Don't view prayer that way. Right. But, it's, but, again, prayer and worship. So... I emphasize, I, I, I brought out the point about uh, repetition because sometimes in our prayer, prayer life and talking with God in our, and in particular in our praise and worship to him, there will be repetition used. The words, thank you, God. Yeah. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to praise you. Right. Lord, I just thank you that you're so good to me. Lord, I thank yes. you that you've made me righteous. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that you've given me everything. You blessed me. You saved me. You put, you put clothes on my body, food on the table. Lord, I just thank you. Yes. Again, do you see, do you see the repetition? That there's some repetition there. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Right. Praise God. So praise and worship. And then the last thing is asking. So number one, relationship. Number two is praise and worship. And number three is asking, or mm. the word petitioning can be used. That's a major part of prayer. So just ask the Lord, just asking him to meet your needs, asking him to forgive you of your sins, asking him to, to strengthen you, asking him to give you wisdom. The book of James chapter 1 tells us, if any man lacks wisdom, let him what? Let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and without reproach. And so the Lord wants yes, you yes. to ask him. Yes. Actually, it would, James would also say, we, we receive not because we ask not. Yeah. Right. And, 
And so ask him, but ask him with the right motivation. Ask him with a heart of faith. Ask him from a heart that wants God to be glorified. Yeah. Ask him from a heart that, Lord, I want your will. I want your will first and foremost in my life. I don't want my way or someone else's way. God, I want your yes, way. Yes, yes. So you can ask him. And yes. hear me today, God honors that type of asking. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank he you said Lord. he honors that type of asking. What do I mean by that, by honor? It means when you ask in faith, God will answer your prayer. Amen. It may not, and Thank you know God. the song that says it may not come when you want it, but he'll be there right on time. Thank you, Hallelujah. Yes. He's an on-time God. God. Oh, yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. And so God will answer that prayer. All right, so we'll, we only have a few minutes left of this program, but we're going to go through the Lord's Prayer real quickly, the Thank different God. aspects of it. And all of these things are so, so important. First of all, Jesus said this, In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father who is in heaven. What does that emphasize? Again, that emphasizes relationship with God as our Father. And we've already pointed that out already in this program. You, God is your Father through your faith in what Jesus has done for you at the cross. It's, he's not your father because you've done enough religious good things. No, he's your father by grace through faith. Yes. In, in your faith, yes. in the finished work of Jesus on the cross, and the fact that he rose from the dead, he is your father. Praise God. So he said, our, our father who is in heaven. Then he said this, hallowed be your name. You see the second line here, what, it bring, what Jesus is bringing it out is that word, those words there, hallowed be your name, that is, that is praise and worship. That's the, yeah. and it's not just praise, it, it is praise and worship, but it's, when he said hallowed be your name, it could, the word hallowed could be translated as holy is your name. And the idea is this, that we are, that we give unto God that reverential or respectful praise and worship that is due to him. Yeah. So the idea is this, the idea is not some careless, you know, kind of flippant kind of praise and Lord, I thank you, whatever. No, but it's a, it's a devoted praise to God and a reverential praise and thankfulness to him. And when I say reverential, don't, don't take that the wrong way uh, because what the Lord is looking for from you and every one of us is simple, childlike faith. Yes. And I love what the great preacher from the 1800s, Charles Spurgeon, said about prayer. He said, the essence of prayer is no different from the, the words of an infant speaking to their, to their parent. Yeah. It's no different from the words of an infant. And you know that the infant can't pronounce, we have a, right. a wonderful uh, granddaughter, her name is Evelyn. She yes. can't really talk, wor some words she can say, mm -hmm. but normally it's just baby talk. But you know what? Sometimes our prayer yes. and our thanksgiving can sound like yeah. baby talk. Right. But you know right. what? To the Father, it is wonderful. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. To the Father, it is wonderful. Yes. And so... Uh, he, wanna... he loves to hear us yes. talk, even if it seems like gibberish, even if we can't get all our thoughts together going back to our previous thought. But he, he understands all of that. He understands it all. And there's a little song that says, uh, when I don't have the words, listen to my heart. Yes. Lord, listen to my heart. Yes. Because sometimes I can't put all the words together. Sometimes uh, it doesn't sound coherent and, and it, it, to me, let alone anyone else. But Lord, listen to my heart. And he does. He hears our heart. And he's got a big old smile on, our, on his face. Uh, not, not saying get it all together. Not with a big club waiting for us to pronounce our words just right or whatever the case. He wants us to come. Our little one, when, yeah. when uh, uh, speaking of Evelyn, uh, she's 20 months old now, I believe. And she, she's starting to say a word here and a word there. But when she couldn't say anything, man, we loved her yes. just as much as when she's going to be able yeah. to speak fluently. We love her no matter what because she is a gift to us. Mm. She is a gift yeah. from our Father to us. And we are going to, we adore her. We love her. Not going to. We do already. Uh, and it just increases more and more. He loves you. 
He loves you. He loves you. We can't emphasize that enough. Yes. It's it's in relationship with our Heavenly Father that we get to come. Yes, amen. You know, and that is the love that we as grandparents have for our granddaughter. Right. How much more the Father's love yeah. for you as his child. And I say how right. much more because Jesus said this in Luke chapter 11 and verse 13, a great verse. He said this again, Luke 11, verse, verse 13. He said, if you being evil, and, and that's not meaning Jesus was meaning that we're evil as parents, right, okay, right. not at all. But in comparison to God, mm -hmm. there's nothing like it. So he said this, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit yeah. or give good things to those who ask him. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we're emphasizing it here, and we're not done yet. We're actually, we're going to pick this up on next week's program. So I encourage you to, to watch again next week. We're going to finish. We're going to deal with this again because it's, it's that important. Mm -hmm. The Father loves you, and he cares for you. Uh, in, in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, boy, it's a great, great two verses right there where Jeremiah is speaking really unto the Lord and God is speaking to him. And, and, and the Lord says, and Jeremiah says, Lord, your, your mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Great is your faithfulness. Yeah. But he also said this. He said, Lord, your compassions, they yes, fail sir. not. Your, your love, God. your everlasting love, yes. your love is everlasting. It lasts forever. And right. your compassions, they fail not. Thank you, Lord. And he said, through this, Jeremiah said, through your love and your, yeah. your compassion and through your mercy and through your faithfulness, uh, I have hope. Yes. And, and get this, we can recall this to our mind mm -hmm. in prayer. You can recall, the, just bring, remind yourself of how good the Lord is to you, mm -hmm. how merciful he is to you, how gracious, how loving he is to you, how faithful he is. He is to you. And Jeremiah said again, Lord, your mercies are new every morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, and you in prayer, you can just, you can tell the Lord that. Lord, I thank you that your mercies are new every yes. morning. And you can just receive it, believe it, and receive thank the you, mercy Lord. of God. Yes. We want to pray for you real quickly thank as you, we Lord. end today. And God, we're going to pick up this so next much. week's program. So watch next week, same time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank, thank you, you for the privilege yes, of talking to you with prayer yes. and you talking to us. Thank God, you, I pray that you would strengthen those that are watching and listening. Jesus. And we ask it all in Jesus' thank name. You, amen Lord. and amen. We're just so thankful that you've joined us today. We pray that yes. you would have a wonderful day in Jesus. Thanks for joining us today on Cross Life. Pastors Bob and Sharon would love to invite you to visit them at Covenant Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Service times are Sunday mornings at 1030 and Tuesday evenings at 7. For more information, be sure to visit cornellministries.com. Your gifts of support help make this program possible. Visit cornellministries.com slash online giving to donate today. We look forward to seeing you next time right here on Cross Life with Pastors Bob and Sharon Cornell.